With the release of AMD's Ryzen 8 core CPUs, we put together the best bang for the buck video editing PC for just $998. A lot of you asked very similar questions about the build, so we're gonna be answering those in the next few videos. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on those. And if you haven't yet seen the full Ryzen build video, hit that card above to check out that video first. Quite a few of you asked about buying two graphics cards to use with a video editing PC if you have more money to spend. Now with video games, you can use two graphics cards to improve your performance and up to double it if the game is well optimized or have little to no impact if the game isn't. So to test out dual graphics and video editing, we went out and bought another RX 480. This card has a different cooler, but other than that, it's identical, both XFX 8GB RX 480s. Before we get into the benchmarks, I wanted to give a big shout out to all the patrons who support us and make videos like this possible. As a thank you to them, we created an almost one and a half hour detailed step-by-step -step build guide for this PC, starting from the parts in boxes all the way to Windows and driver installation. That video is available on our Patreon page, so if you enjoy our channel and want to support future videos, consider supporting us and getting all the bonuses of being a patron. We'll leave a link in the description along with a full parts list for our build. Premiere Pro has supported dual graphics cards since 2013, so you would expect it to be fairly well optimized. Well, unfortunately, that is not the case. When I started testing editing and playback performance, I noticed that the second graphics card wasn't doing anything at all. With some research, I figured out that Premiere Pro only supports two graphics cards when you're actually exporting and rendering a video. So most of the time when you're actually editing your video, it's doing nothing at all. Really Adobe after four years? So let's just move on and check out rendering performance and let's hope to see something positive. Rendering a five minute 1080p clip with two LUTs and film grain applied, we start to see both graphics cards being used and the dual RX 480s are a whopping 4% faster. That's right, we saved a whole seven seconds. The same test in 4K results in 3% faster speed. Oh wait, I got that backwards. The single RX 480 is 3% faster. Now let's move on to the toughest test, which is four 4K clips scaled into a 4K project with each one having two LUTs and film grain applied and two of those clips being reversed. This super complex render is where I expected dual graphics cards to finally shine and we got a massive improvement of 1%. Now this really doesn't make sense at first, but when you start monitoring GPU usage, you'll notice that Premiere Pro is either using one or the other and kind of switching back and forth instead of using both of them at the same time, which makes sense with our results being really almost no difference or even slightly negative. Next, I started to take a look at DaVinci Resolve, and I also came up to the same issue of only one graphics card being used. Now this time, it wasn't because of poor optimization, but it was because I had the free version of Resolve, which doesn't support dual graphics cards. The paid version of Resolve cost $995, and one of the few extras over the free version is support for dual graphics. Since I don't use DaVinci Resolve in my regular work, I can't justify spending $1,000 on the program, so I started to search online, and surprisingly, there's almost no info available on single versus dual graphics cards. After about an hour of searching, I did find a few pieces of information that was helpful, one of which is a YouTube video with a $13,000 computer. This thing is using two 12-core Xeon processors and four Titan X graphics cards. I'll leave the link to the video in the description if you guys want to check the whole thing out, but I'll summarize it here. He did some different testing and there really wasn't any improvement using the $1,000 version with the four Titan X graphics cards versus using the free light version and just one of those graphics cards. Editing performance, playback smoothness was all the same. Now when he rendered his Blackmagic 4K raw footage, he did notice a difference of about 15%. That's about one minute saved for his project. Now, unlike Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve does have some effects that are rendered using only the graphics cards. I found an old article on barefeats.com where they tested single versus dual graphics using DaVinci Resolve's noise reduction. Since noise reduction is only rendered using graphics cards, they literally saw a doubling of performance when you had two of them. Now noise reduction is only available on the paid version just like dual graphics card support is. So if you have the paid version and you use noise reduction often, dual graphics cards are worth it. 
With the majority of video editors using Premiere Pro, it's very sad to see Adobe not optimizing their programs. There's no support for dual graphics while editing, and when rendering, there's almost no difference and sometimes even a negative impact. On top of that, a really powerful 8-core Ryzen CPU is usually only about 50-60% to 60 utilized. So in conclusion, dual graphics cards are definitely not worth it for most of us, and I think the biggest takeaway is Adobe, please start focusing a little bit more on optimization instead of just putting all your efforts on adding new features. If you haven't checked out our $998 Best Bang for the Buck video editing PC video, definitely check that out. And as a reminder, we have the step-by-step -step build guide for that computer available on our Patreon page. So if you like our videos and you guys want to support us and get some extra bonuses, check out the link in the video description along with the full parts list. If you have any questions, you can ask in the comment section below. And if you like what you saw, hit that like and subscribe button below the video. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.